certified and organic and that's such a broad spectrum word. You could be, you could say you're organic and have five acres and live next door to a farmer who has 200 in a spring. Yeah. So the spray in the air could go on to the organic. Oh yeah, you're, you're absolutely right about that. I never thought about that. And airborne. Yeah. You know? Hi. Hi there. How are you? Good. <laughs> um, your name is? Oh, my name is Neil Dubois. I'm the, the head chef here at the Woolwich Arrow in uh, Guelph, Ontario. Okay. Uh, we here as a, a, a cornerstone of our philosophy here, we, we try to do things as locally and as uh, as tasty as we possibly can. Um, it's, it starts even with our beer menu. We uh, we have nothing but local beers on tap. Uh, maybe a couple from, well, we have one Moosehead from New Brunswick and uh, one from Quebec. But uh, we have seven different beers just from the, the immediate vicinity around Guelph alone. Um, and then, you know, Toronto, Ottawa, and all that sort of stuff. Uh, as far as food, we, we try to get to know our farmers as much as we possibly can. Uh, you know, when, when you meet the guy and you shake his hand, it... Uh, it gives you much more respect for the product and uh, what it's doing to, to get it to you. Um, like I, I mentioned before, you know, what we do as, as cooks and chefs is only have the story. The, the story starts at the farm and uh, we, we just take that product that he's worked very hard on and we just try to make it as tasty as possible and it's usually not that hard if, if you're using the, the, the right stuff. So, how do you as a chef buy products that are sustainable? Uh, well, you gotta do the, the research. Yeah. Um, work with your your suppliers. If if you got a if you got a, a big supplier, um, we we use as our, our main suppliers uh, uh, Morton's and uh, Hundred Mile Foods. Okay. So you know, talk to your sales rep. You know, let him do the research. Show Vince look at the research. Okay. Uh, and when when you do that sort of stuff and you know it, it takes a little bit of research go to your farmers market see who you're talking to there yeah um, I just found a, a guy who's giving me great smoked pork shoulder uh, who's a friend of a friend yeah you know and he just happened to give me a call one day and said like what are you guys using for your pulled pork and I'm like actually I'm not 100% happy with it and he's like you know I'd, I'd, I'd like to do things a little bit more closely to close to home and he's like well I'm doing it now great price and uh, you know everyone's happy in the end yeah you know he's got his farm on our menu and people know where to get it if they want to get it for themselves and uh, it, it, it's it's got to be a symbiotic relationship Have you ever read the, the uh, omnivores dilemma yes yeah what is your take on that uh, you know it's it's I think what he says it's it's true you know it's you know, uh, you, you should eat mostly vegetables and a little bit of meat yeah you know and it's just like I said, it's just common sense. But, you know, we're not good at that. We are, are kind of self destructive by nature. And, you know, I, I... You kind, it's, you, it's, kind of, you kind of follow what he says in his book, right? Because um, he says you should always know where your food is coming from. Oh, right? exactly. And, you know, and that, that's, that's an important part of our philosophy here. Now, obviously, this is not a, a health food restaurant. No. No. I, 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 I think this place is it's a place of want, not of, yeah. of, of uh, what, you, what you should have. Um, but at the same time, you know, at home, I try to adhere to that sort of stuff, you know, buy as much local as we possibly can, try to eat as much vegetables, well, obviously, being a vegetarian. Unfortunately, they don't make potato chips out of meat, so that's still a <laughs> problem. <laughs> but, you know, it, it's... Yeah, it, like I said, it makes sense, and uh, the, the it's it's up to the individual to, to make those calls, and they're hard calls to make. I have trouble with them all the time too, but uh, 
No, yeah, I, I think he's on point. How, as a chef, do you make choices to avoid industrial corn? Industrial corn? Yeah. Uh, try to make as much stuff by scratch as you can. Yeah. You know, if you're making Caesar dressing from the ingredients that you know, none of them is corn. Yeah. It's, it's going to be that much easier. And it's it, hard to. It's kind of hard to find products that don't have corn in them, right? Well, that's because it, it's become such a, a, a cheap a staple. A staple. That it's, uh, yeah, that a lot of these big producers are, are you know, they almost have to use it. Yeah. But, you know, you make as much stuff from scratch as you can, and you, you'll, you'll cut down on your corn. What It'll replacements for corn on. products can you suggest? Um... I'm sorry, how so, like, uh, I mean, like, uh, the, are you talking about corn as, like, a, as like a corn whole. syrup or yeah. corn as a whole? corn, I would say corn syrup. Well, you know, it's, 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 <laughs> um, well, one of the things that, you know, we, we do use a little, like, you know, sugar's obviously the, the, the easiest one. Yeah. Um, but Agave? If, sorry? Agave? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or we, we you know we're using a lot of honey here too. It's 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 not the cheapest solution, but it's it's definitely a solution. And you know, like uh, like I said, you just keep it out of your house, and you'll be amazed how little you use it. Yeah. You know? it's, or keep it out of your kitchen. You know, <laughs> if, if it's not there to to, to use as a cheat, then yeah. you won't use it, awesome. and you'll find other ways of doing it.